hands. Oh my gosh, hands. This thing comes with probably like the most amount of hands I've ever had on a figure. Maybe not the most, but it, it comes with a lot of hands. So it comes out naturally in the box with these splayed out hands like this. And these, these look very nice, very uh, expressive. Then it also comes with these two sort of open palm hands, but they're not really completely open, they're sort of bent because they're supposed to be like touching the ground. And so if you have your fingers touching the ground, they're going to look like this, which is, I love that attention to detail. Then you also come with these uh, claw or grabbing hands. And these look very nice as well. Uh, these can be for just like... I don't know, you can pretty much just grab things with these. You also come with these sort of uh, splayed out hands like these. And these are for like running p positions and stuff. Which I will show later on in pictures and stuff. And then it also comes with two regular fists. These also look really nice. And then we get into these hands. So for these, you have these two hands right here. And looking at them on their own, you might think they're just thumbs up hands. But if you see, there is actually a slot in the center of them. And these are for holding the weapons. Specifically, these ones are for holding the progressive knife. So you just slide it into there, and then it holds it really nicely. And also, if you were wanting to, you can also put it in holding it like this, because this is the most effective way to hold a knife. And then last but not least, you come with these hands, which are sort of similar to the uh, progressive knife hands, except these ones are slightly different, because these are for holding the pallet rifle. Now, I've, it's sort of difficult getting the pallet rifle in the hands, so you just sort of have to mess around with them. You sort of have to uh, bend them out, bend the fingers out a little bit, so that way it will fit into the... the way the gun will fit into the hand. There we go. So it holds it nice and securely, very tight, and it looks very good. And you can use this with a combination of the other hands as well to sort of get a dual-handed thing, which I will also show later. Then it also comes with an umbilical cable, which this is basically just for powering it. So without this plugged into it, the it can only the it can only last for about five minutes before it shuts down. And um, the cable itself is made out of a bendable wire, so you can pose it all you want, and that is really nice, and I really like that. It doesn't really plug into anything, it's just sort of uh, there and it exists, but that doesn't really bother me, because if you have it like going somewhere off screen, then it looks fine. And now what I would say is probably my one of my favorite accessories is the defeated angel that it comes with. This thing is basically just an alien that attacks stuff. So this in itself looks pretty cool, but there comes there comes with more. It also comes with this uh, blood splatter effect, and there are two pegs right there, and if you just plug it into the back, you will be able to get it on there. I don't recommend plugging in all the way, I recommend leaving a little bit of wiggle room so that way you're able to uh, get it off easily without worrying about breaking the pegs. And this sort of just lies down on the ground, like so. It sort of just lies there. Then it also comes with a broken rib, like this, that 
Uh, I think it's this one. It doesn't actually attach, but it looks like it could. And if you mess around with it, you can like, get it to sit on top. But uh, I'm not going to bother with that right now. And this, you can use one of the pallet rifle hands, and you can put the rib in one of the hands so that the Ava can hold it. And, uh, yeah. Now, what I think may be the coolest part of this is, you see on this back right here, you have this little uh, hole right here for the back. And when you flip the switch on, it glows. The chest orb glows. And that is so, so cool. And the best part about it is, pardon me, the best part about it is that it, the batteries are included. It comes with the batteries in it, so you don't even need to buy it. But in case they drain or run out, uh, just in case you want to know what kind they are, they are LR44 batteries. So just in case you run out, it takes three of them in this little back compartment right here. But um, if you use it sparingly, you won't need to. Then it also comes with, if you don't feel like displaying it on the uh, ground, it also comes with an arm that you can plug into the back here. And of course, it also has a RebelTech joint, a double RebelTech joint right there. So it has two RebelTech Rebel joints. And uh, you can sort of move this um, however you can, sort of limited, but you can move it around and stuff. And it looks pretty nice. And of course, uh, you wouldn't want to just flop on the ground like this. I mean, you could have it like that. But why would you do that when you can plug it in to this included stand? And this stand is pretty nice. It also just plugs into the back right there. And then you can have it floating around and being creepy and stuff. So you can have it like... You can have it... Glowing. And then... That looks ominous and cool. And this stand is not just for that. It can also plug into the Ava itself. By way of this little plug it has right here in the back and you just take this and you plug it in and then it holds on very very sturdily and this is great for uh like any jumping poses or any sort of that it, it's it's great it's a great uh accessory and i love it uh the thing itself is not made of rebel type joints surprisingly the older stands used to be, and those were garbage and they'd break and stuff. This is a good sturdy stand, so it can bend here and bend here and bend here, and it can rotate inside there, and then it can rotate at the base as well. And the stand is really good. So, that is all of the accessories. Now I will show you how to incorporate them into the figure. Now, with the alternate things, like the, uh, the alternate head and alternate hands, those are what I'd say would be uh, my least favorite part about the figure. Not the accessories themselves, the, the, the accessories are great. The problem is switching them out. Now, with, with uh, these hands and stuff, they, the, the, the hands they come out in the box, uh, they come off and on pretty easily. But most of the other hands, are a pain to get on. And don't even get me started on this head. The standard head it comes with comes off and on easily. This thing, every time I put it on, I'm afraid I'm going to break it. So that is really a problem, and I'm not really sure what to do to fix that. Because this isn't really the type of plastic that you can just heat up with a blowtorch. This isn't the, the right kind of plastic, I don't think. So uh, it just kind of scares me every time I put on the head because I'm afraid something's going to break off like the antenna thing. But for the sake of the video, I will show you what it's like to put them on and off. So for the hands, you're just going to want to pop them off. Sometimes the joint will come up with it. You're just going to want to take that out because that's supposed to stay inside of the wrist. Like so. And then you can put any one of the hands that you want. Um, they are... 
most of them are kind of difficult to get in, like I said. So we'll just go with, uh, let's go with the knife hand. So you're going to want to plug it in. See the thing about this is it moves around a whole bunch, and so it's a pain to get in. All right, there we go. So now we have that in, and you can take the you can take the knife and put it in there, and then he looks all cool with the knife. Now, honestly, I think the knife uh, to me is a little bit too big, because because uh, if you think about a knife, it's typically about uh, maybe twice the size of your hand, including the handle. But this is about the blade itself is like like a hand and a half. So I think that the bl the blade is a little bit too big, but it still looks pretty cool. And then for the other side, let's try the gun holding hand. So again, you're going to want to take off the hand, and sometimes the peg will come off as well. It's fine, just take it and put it back into the wrist, wrist joint right here, like that. And then we will take the gun holding hand, we will plug it in, and it's also kind of strange because some of the plugs are have different uh, locations in hands than other ones do, like, uh, if I can show you some of them, yeah, so like mainly with the knife holding hand and the gun holding hand, uh, you'll see like with the regular splayed out open hand, the peg hole is in the very center of the hand, but for these ones, the peg hole goes upwards into the thumb area, and so it's kind of difficult keeping those aligned properly. But once you get them on, then you get the accessories in like you want. The pallet rifle I always find difficult to get on uh, with the hand, but you just sort of have to uh, mess around with it, just like regular. I recommend putting it in like this, with the butt of the gun facing outward and then rotating it inward so that it can face the hand and then you get it in like that and then it looks super cool and then it looks like he's about to wreck some face with his gun and his kniff. And like I said before, you can get some of the hands where you, it looks like you can like dual wield the gun. Uh, you can do this with the open hands, but I actually like using the either the knife holding hands or the other gun holding hands, so that way you have a more sturdy grip, and then he can hold the gun with two hands. And I really like the way this looks. It really helps having all that articulation so he's able to do stuff like this. Then you also have the umbilical cable, like I said, and this just plugs into the back of uh, this little hole right here in the back, and so you just take this and plug it in, and there you go, and it stays in there pretty securely, and then you can bend it around and do all that sort of stuff that you want with it. And then, uh, my least favorite part of all of it is switching the heads. So. Like I said, switching the head, this head out is pretty easy. Sometimes the neck will come off and you just have to plug that back in. And then getting this head on, the damaged head, this is the my least favorite part about the figure. I'm actually going to do this off camera because if I feel like holding it over a camera, I might break it. And um, there you go. And then you have it with the damaged eye and open mouth. And the reason the mouth opens is because it's in its rage mode, where it just destroys everything in its path. Well, uh, we'll get more into that later. So coming back to the uh, blood effect, there are also there are actually four pegs. These two right here are for holding the angel in, but I believe you can also use any of these to hold the Ava to stand, because it has these pegs right here in its uh, heels so you can just sort of plug those in anywhere that you want to get it to stand. But honestly, that really isn't needed unless you're getting it in like a running pose where you only have one foot on the ground. Because having two feet on the ground, this thing 
despite its lanky nature and its long limbs and sort of crazy design, it stands up really, really well. Like, this is like one of the best standing figures I've had, because almost all of my SH figure arts figures like hate standing. But this thing is such a uh, joy to stand because it just, I don't know what it is about it that makes it stand so easily, but it just does, it really does. And one thing that I forgot to mention that is technically an accessory is the arm of the defeated annual is that it has a peg right here on the arm. And you may notice that any of the open hands, like uh, any of these, like the, this one or this one or this one, all have little holes in them. And this is for um, grabbing and you just plug the arm into the peg or the you grab the arm plug it into the hand and then you're able to and then you're able to take the arm and then it can beat it to death with its own arm that's kind of a not a fun way to go so basically it just rips it apart and then beats beats it to death with itself so you have the stuff like this and yeah, so that's just an interesting little accessory. Now what may be my favorite part of this figure that I just adore so much and is just so fun to me is the fact that all these green parts glow in the dark. This figure glows in the dark. I have never had a figure that glows in the dark before. And it's so cool because it's like accurate because in the show or the movies, the whenever it's in the dark, it the green parts glow. And so that's just so cool. Now, it looks great in, in real life, but on camera it may not show quite as well. But I will try my best in the following pictures to show it off. So basically, this is one of the best figures I have ever owned. It has such great articulation, so many cool accessories, and it just has so many cool gimmicks like light up features and glow in the dark. It's just so hard to get mad at this figure about anything other than maybe the fact of the overuse of Rebel Tech joints. But even that, after you get used to it, is not that bad. And I have, it's been a long time since I've had such fun with a figure. So I think I'm going to leave this video here. I hope you enjoyed and if you want definitely check this figure out. Uh, don't hesitate to buy it. It is so worth it. And I got it for about I got it for about fifty dollars and I'd say it is worth every bit. So that being said, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And to make sure you don't miss any of my videos, hit that little bell notification as well. So long.